6.30 at midnight on W.E.E.K. Five. 25 Sports presents Bradley Basketball. This exclusive telecast is brought to you in part by Pioneer Park Mitsubishi Hyundai Peoria and Parkway Mitsubishi Normal. By Counter Lock and Load Closed Handling System and Now Herbicide. By Country Companies. When it matters most, the country's behind you. By Taco Bell, the only place with the great taste from those three value menus. Run for the border. By Jim McComb Chevrolet Geo, University at One Memorial Peoria, because we're doing what it takes. By the First National Bank of Peoria, confident, dependable, secure. By United Artists Cable, we're tuned in to you. By Moore's Jewelry, not just another jewelry store. By Design Furniture and Systems, a comprehensive approach to design. By Ford, quality people, quality products. By Kitchen Cooked, if it was any fresher, it would be a potato. And by Budweiser, the king of beers, with that clean, crisp, cold taste, nothing beats a bud. This season, the Blues have been picking on Bradley coach Jim Molinari. Hello and welcome to Bradley Basketball on WEEK. I'm Lee Hall. Jim Molinari's season couldn't get any worse, but it did yesterday. The coach mentioned in a Chicago Sun-Times article concerning DePaul basketball and an FBI investigation. More on that a little bit later, but the reason we mention that, Roger Figley, is because it could serve as a distraction for the Braves tonight as they visit Illinois State. Oh, you're it's very possible that it could leave, but, you know, in my opinion, I think the biggest distraction is a 6-17 and 17 record and 12 consecutive losses on the road. And it certainly won't get any easier here tonight in that Redbird Arena. But you know, it's an important game for both teams. Bradley, trying to get into the Valley Tournament, is running out of time. They're going to have to prove that they can beat somebody along the way. They can't rely on other teams beating everybody else. ISU on the other hand has got a chance to get in a position where they can win this conference tournament. They can make a big step tonight by beating Bradley and not letting a team that on paper shouldn't beat them not beat them. The Braves and Illinois State. Need we say more? Starting lineups in just a minute. I let my car to my brother, and he demolished it. Two years old, didn't have a scratch. <laughs> Funny. By a month before, my agent had recommended this extra keeper coverage. $21 more a year. I remember thinking, well, I probably don't need it, but if you think so, it turns out they gave me a brand new car. This year's mine. Country companies. It's nice to know when it matters most. The country is behind you. Guess it's just a matter of trust. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Sunday, workday, play day, every day, Monday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Monday, every day and every way you will love a Hyundai. No matter the day, Pioneer Park Hyundai can let you drive away in the luxurious Hyundai Sonata for only 11 530. This is a Hyundai from Pioneer Park Hyundai, the Sonata, mid-sized luxury you're gonna love. Every day and every way you will love a Hyundai. Pioneer Park Hyundai, Pioneer Parkway at North Hyundai. University, Peoria. Welcome back to Redbird Arena. Lee Hall along with Roger Fegley. We get ready for tonight's Missouri Valley Contest between the Illinois State Redbirds. 10 and 10 overall, 8 and 4 in the Valley. And the Braves 6 and 17, 2 and 9. Steve Adams on the PA. Features our guests from Peoria, Illinois, the Braves of Bradley University, and our Redbirds of Illinois State University. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing tonight's starting lineups. At forward for Bradley, a 6'7 sophomore from Grand Blanc, Michigan, number 23, James Hamilton. Forward for Illinois State, 6'6 from Oak Park, River Forest High School, and Lincoln College, a junior, number three, Steve Fitch. At the other forward for Bradley, 6'1 from Peoria Central, a junior, number 14, Charles White. Forward for the Redbirds, 6'7 from Newton, Massachusetts, a sophomore, number 21, Scott Pinkler. At 
catcher for the Braves, six six from Houston, Texas, a senior, number five, James Bailey. Then they will for the Redbirds, six five from Chicago, South Shore, a senior, number forty two, Scott Fowler. One of the guards for Bradley, six feet tall, from Sugarland, Texas, the junior number 10, Dwayne Broussard. And a guard for Illinois State, six two from Quincy, Illinois, a stop ball, number 34, Todd Wittmainer. And the other guard for the Braves, six three freshman from Glen Barton North, number 32, Roger Cookie. Guard for the Redbirds, 5'11 from Normal Community, a junior. Number 12, Todd Hagel. Bradley's coach in his first season at Bradley, Jim Molinari. Illinois State's coach in his third season, Bob Bender. The Braves try for their first road win in the Valley tonight at Illinois State. We'll be back with the tip off in just a minute. Corn Growers, Roofworm Protection has taken on a whole new shape. Introducing the Lock and Load Closed Handling System, the new safer way to handle your insecticide. Each Lock and Load container opens automatically when attached to your planter lid. Just lock it on and it loads. It's fast, easy, and dust-free. New Lock and Load. Available only at your Cyanamid Agri-Center dealer. For a clean, fresh taste that will fill you up and never let you down, Bud Light delivers. Nice crowd here tonight. Bradley can get off to a good start. It will certainly keep the crowd quieted and it'll be in Bradley's favor. Braves off to slow starts in their last three games. They were down 11 nothing against Creighton, down 24 to three against Southern, down 23 to seven at the ball the other night. The thing that hurt Bradley all year, all year long turnovers. Grant Broussard tried to penetrate there, got a little tangled up, committed a traveling violation. And it was good to see Charles hit that first shot. He's been red hot lately in his last three games. He shot 58% from the field. If we can get him the ball and get him some opportunities to score, he can really help. Richard Thomas not in the starting lineup tonight for Illinois State. He is out with a sprained knee. And that's a shame, too, because he's been playing very well for the Redbirds lately, too. Todd Cagle replaces him. Good hard nose ball handler. Won't make a lot of mistakes. Richard should play tonight. It's uh, actually just a very mild twist to the knee, so he should play. He's not in the starting lineup for only the second time this season, but we expect to see him out on the floor tonight. 18-37 to go first half. 2 nothing. Braves with the early lead. Good crowd on hand tonight here at Redbird Arena. Working inside to James Hamilton. Goes up some contact. Gets his own shot back. Puts it up. No good. And now a whistle inside. It'll go against James Bailey. That's good work by Bradley inside there, getting offensive rebounds. That's one of the things that the ISU staff said they had to stop tonight. ISU's not a great rebounding team. Bradley's got some opportunities to slide in there. James Hamilton's got a good opportunity there. I think he'd like to have that one again. Braves haven't shot well in the first half of their last three games either. ISU, not a particularly good first half team, but they can really turn it on in the second half. They really play well as a team, too. They're very patient. Their bread and butter is their defense. They're not a great offensive club. They don't have any particular one score that is in any of the top categories in the league. But as a team, they're in 13 of the top 17 categories. 
Scott Taylor took a bad shot, but uh, gets rewarded for some hustle after the miss. Jump ball on the possession arrow favors the Redbirds. Well, it could have been a three-second call, too. He had possession of the ball in the middle of the lane. Redbirds looking for their first score of the night, and they get it from Scott Fowler, the senior. They'll go to the line for the three-point play. Scott Fowler, who sat out last year with a knee injury. 73% from the free throw line. Had a really tough start the other night at Southern Illinois. Missed his first three shots. Finished with nine points. I think while he was out rehabilitating that knee, he also did some work on that upper body, too. <laughs> He's a big man. He can cause some problems underneath of that side. But Bradley has nobody that can match strength with Scott Fowler. He added 40 pounds to his bench press in the offseason and added 10 pounds of solid muscle to that upper body. Inside, James Bailey, fall away, tough shot, Fowler with a rebound. I give it Fowler at the beginning of the season, I told him I was just going to call him Sir this year. He is so big. There he's working down low, gets position. James Bailey with a nice anticipation, steps in and steals the pass. Nice defense that time by the Braves. They're down 3-2, it's like just about three minutes. Well, neither team's really going to push the pace in this game. We're going to see a lot of passing around the perimeter and trying to work the ball in for the best available shot. James Bailey thought about the shot. This is Charles White instead. Inside, Hamilton, good defense follower, but Willie hits the shot. Hey, James does a great job inside for a guy who's not that big and that strong. He really posts up well and uses what talent he has inside a great opportunity to score. Ball slapped away by Charles White. You know, we talked about Scott Fowler adding some bulk, and that's something Jim Molinari has really touched on, too. He wants to see a lot of his players hit, hit the weights in the offseason and, uh, and add some bulk. A lot of the pitch missed it. The pitch goes back up, and there'll be a foul against Roger Cookie, who got a lot of ball. Tried to lob on the inbound play. Uh, pitch had it, just missed it. Uh, he's a very athletic player. He can get up and get that ball and control it in the air. Something you've got to be aware of at all times is his athletic ability. We were talking about how players need to improve their strength during the offseason. Some great things are going to happen on the Bradley campus now. They're already starting to build that weight facility at uh, Robertson Memorial Fieldhouse. That's just going to be a tremendous asset to the entire program. Steve Pitcher, 6'6", junior from Lincoln Junior College. Only 40% from the free throw line this season. Takes one of two and we're tied at four. Dwayne Broussard with it at the point. Roger Sook. Inside again to Hamilton. Well, that's what they want to do tonight. Bailey rebounds the air ball and dumps it. Nice play. James Bailey got the rebound, took it up between two Redford players and threw it down. James getting a little more of an opportunity to see the floor now with uh, the injury to uh, the ailment to Chad Klein. He hasn't had surgery. And Sounds like he may be back sooner than it's expected. He told me before the game he's already running drills with the team from contact trip. And half a second this last week. Taylor in the lane, off for the charge. That's always the toughest call for an official to make. Charles White slid over into the lane, cut Scott Taylor off, and they got the charging call. 15.54 to go first half as Sean Smith checks into the ball game where uh, actually Bradley leads at 6-4. The First National Bank of Peoria, a name you can trust. We've been serving the Peoria area with quality services and competitively priced loans since 1863. Peoria's First Bank has a strong tradition of security, safety, and stability, and we're here to stay. Come visit us at any of our convenient locations, downtown Knoxville, Virginia, and North Point, each with a friendly and efficient staff with a personal interest in you. Competent, dependable, secure. The First National Bank of Peoria. Member First Peoria Corp. Member FDIC. 
Did you know that five of the top ten best-selling cars and trucks in America are Fords? It's a fact. Import or domestic, Ford trucks lead all others. Trucks like Ford Ranger, the best-selling compact pickup in America, with features the imports can't match, even a three-year buffer to buffer warranty. And right now, you can save up to $2,700 on a new Ranger. That's right, save $2,700. For five of the top ten best-selling cars and trucks in America, there's only one place to go, your local Ford dealer. the early 6-4 lead at Illinois State on the nice dunk by James Bailey. Good offensive rebounding here by the Braves. James did a nice job getting in position there over the, the smaller Kegel and got the rebound, gathered himself, and went up and threw it down. Later in the game, we'll select the Bradley player of the game presented by Budweiser. Stay tuned to see which Braves steps forward to make the big plays it takes to be player of the game. Budweiser, the king of beers. 6-4, Braves by a pair. Not a lot of scoring so far, and that's not unexpected. Both these teams playing a little close to the best this year. Well, the shooting percentages aren't too well. ISU just made one of the first five shots. Bradley's made three of seven, but 43 percent. Rebounds are pretty even. Bradley's got five. ISU's got four. I said earlier that Richard Thomas had a sprain. The first that's uh, much more serious than what it actually is. He's got a bruised knee at the spoke. He'll play. He's a big part of the Redbird offense. Zach Cagle, the defense against Wayne Broussard. Mike Vandegaard will check in for the Redbirds. Connects that ball. Todd Mermater picks it up. Gives it to Scott Taylor. And he's hammered by James Bailey. Nice pass off the break. Well, he really had that 19-point game against Northern Iowa. 
hasn't really done much since. Turnover goes to the Braves. So for Sean Smith, you know, he came out with that new hairdo, and it was hair today, gone tomorrow. <laughs> Five Wayne Broussard. Now it's Sean Smith. Yeah, the Globe Trotter took us out here. Not too, too much longer, but the Braves doing their best impersonation tonight. James Hamilton. Offensive rebound, no contact, or no foul, rather. Plenty of contact. Steve Fitch. Fitch is another bunny. Big walk around. He's got a piece of that. Charles White. That's a good shot off transition. Charles dropped the ball up the floor as far as good to the defense stop and he brought himself 15 feet away and dropped a nice open jump shot. Charles White 2 for 2 from the field and Bradley leads Illinois State 10-5. Richard Thomas checks into the ball game. He'll replace Todd Cagle and give it a go tonight. Bang knees. Bang knees the other night in the Southern Illinois game with Tyrone Bell on the last play of the game. And the Redbirds come away empty-handed once again on the offensive end. They trail by 5, 13, 30 to go first half. Kwame Brown said about 50 picks in the game. I'll tell you what, he said two just then, and they were both good picks. Whistle underneath, foul on Mike Vandegaard, his first. You know, I really like Dwayne Broussard, he's a great kid. Just needs to expand his game a little bit. He's so quick with the ball, he can penetrate. He just can't get to the situation where he can get the ball up on the glass and get it in the basket. You know, the teams, when he does drive, he beats his man out front. They don't come over to guard him. They stay on, on their respective men and leaves nobody to pass to. Jim Molinari talked about that earlier this week. It's kind of like playing five on four or five on three for the Braves because they won't guard the way so they can guard somebody else. That's a good screen there by Kwame Brown. James Hamilton wide open inside. Called it for the walk. Well, he made a nice move. He must have just extended himself a little bit too far on the fake and drug and finish, but a nice pass by Dwayne to bounce that ball into him. And the Illinois State crowd trying to pick up their Redbirds. They're down five with 12 points to go. First half, Richard Thomas puts up a tough shot. That's an unfortunate foul there by Dwayne. He played good defense. Cut Richard Thomas off in the lane. He went up to make the shot. He's going to get a chance to look at it here. See, there's good defense. Made Richard change the shot, which makes it a very difficult shot to shoot. But then Dwayne brought the arm down and caught him on his arm and created the foul. Ryan Curran checks into the ball game. The freshman from Vandalia replaces Scott Fowler. Richard Thomas will go to the line shooting two for 59% from the free throw line. He had eight points, two assists the other night at Carbondale. Six foot junior from Whitney Young in Chicago. He struggled at the line lately. This is a ball. Now have an idea just how loud it gets near the basket. 10-5 Braves. Good start for Bradley. Sean Smith dribbles, puts it up, hits. Mike Vandegaard to the floor, no call. Well five. Sean must feel the the streak should be over now. He's come out playing very well and made a couple of baskets here. The Redbirds were starting offensively, working inside the turn. That shot was on its way up. It was hit. No call. It would have been goaltending. Let's see. Kwame Brown does have good athletic skills. He was five feet away from the, from the shooter there and just timed it perfectly. Went up, got a hand on it, deflected that shot. Wasn't the best decision making for the freshman to take that shot, but... Definitely on a downward flight. I don't know how three guys can miss it, but they did. Turnover Braves. They lead it. Good start for Bradley. 11.58 to go first half. 12-5. Braves lead it.
Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday, work day, play day, every day, Monday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Monday, every day and every way you love a Hyundai. At Pioneer Park Hyundai, we excel with excels in three or four doors. You can drive home and you excel for only $67.55 or $149 a month. At prices this low, you can excel at Pioneer Park Hyundai. Every day and every way you love a Hyundai. Pioneer Park Hyundai, Pioneer Parkway, North Hyundai. University, Peoria. Family player profile brought to you by Country Companies Insurance. What it matters most, the country's behind you. Mark Bailey measured in, measures in as Bradley's tallest player at 6'11". He hailed from the St. Louis area where he was a three-year starter in high school. Mark played in the first game last season for the Braves, then red-shirted. He's 19 years old, plans a major in communication. Bradley Huddle, team foul, 6-2, the Braves whistle for it in the early going, but they lead 12-5, and this is exactly the kind of stuff Bradley wanted to see. You bet Bradley's getting the kind of shots they want, they love their percentage, now they're 6-12, 50%, continue to keep ISU at day, and one of eight from the floor. One field goal for Illinois State in eight minutes of play. That's another key stat that's going to play a big part later in the game, Bradley yet to go to the free throw line. ISU has made only three of seven. Well, Illinois State got bailed out on that one because they had a steal. I'd like to see that one again. Pass was deflected out front. James went up. Here it is. Good luck. See if James get, does get a hand in the middle of the back. Uh, maybe a little bit. It's unfortunate, though. Vandegaard would have never had a chance to catch that pass. It was well over his head. Vandegaard will go to the line. Mike Vandegaard knows a little bit about the Bradley rivalry. He was recruited by Bradley and Illinois State. So it's come to normal. And the Redbirds can't buy a free throw. Three of eight. Let's go and check that basket down. That might be moving a little bit. Braves by seven. Pressure by Illinois State. And the Braves have handled that tonight, something that gave them plenty of problems earlier this season. Charles White guarded by Richard Thomas. Kwame Brown at the free throw line. See Kwame just doesn't really want to take that shot there. He has plenty of opportunity to elected to pass it up. Eventually, if he can put into his repertoire the ability to make that shot from right there when he's left open, he could really be a help to his Bradley team. Uh, Illinois State not playing much defense. Sean Smith dribbling all over the floor at will. He will go to the line. Scott Taylor will check in for ISU. He replaces Steve Fitz. James Bailey back into the ball game to replace James Hamilton. It's a good observation there. Lee Bradley has been able to do a very good job tonight of getting the ball inside, both with a pass and with a penetration dribble. Sean Smith, 83% from the line. <laughs> and falling. There's Jim Molinari mentioned in that article we spoke about earlier in the game. The FBI investigating to see whether the ball players were given the use of apartments by a gentleman who worked for First Chicago Bank. The same gentleman allowed Jim Molinari to use a moving van and movers, which is not a violation, and in one man's opinion, not really that big a deal. It's the other things that the FBI is looking into. Yeah, those are just types of things that just pop up. When things are going bad, it just when it rains and pours, so to speak. And, you know, there's probably nothing to that at all, but yet in a 6-17 season, those things have to be brought up. The Redbirds taking four shots and not playing good defense, and the Braves look like world beaters. 13-5, 10-45 to go first half. Inside to Kwame Brown. The Birds bring it. They made just one field goal. One field goal, three free throws for five points. We talked about the importance of getting off to a good start. Defensively, they could not have expected to have done any better. Well, the fans wanted Brian Kern to make a move inside. The Redbirds, the Redbirds are home, but they look 
like they're lost. Yeah, they're really struggling right now. They don't have any continuity in their offense. Kern just being out of sync, had an opportunity the first time he got the ball, passed it up. And when he got the ball the second time, really wasn't open and tried to force something, created a turnover. Roger Cookie with the ball, guarded by Antoine Nick, who just checked in for Richard Thomas. Now it's Charles White. The Braves, a new offensive look, as you mentioned, Roger, dribbling around the perimeter. Every time they set that screen out front, James Bailey's got the call there now. ISU's trailing behind. See, there he goes behind James. That's going to create a shot right there at any time if Bradley wants to take advantage of that. And James Bailey rolls one in from the top of the D. He's got four, and the Braves lead is now 10. Juan Hicks kicks it to Brian Kern. Long shot by Kern, in and out. Taylor had a hand on it. Cookie can't control. Saved by the Braves. Right now, Bradley just out hustling by ISU on their defensive board. It's got kind of a dangerous pass by Charles, trying to save it going out of bounds. The rule is never flip it in front of the opposing basket. He didn't, they got away with it. Inside the Kwame Brown. James can't handle the pass, and it's ISU ball. Scott Fowler checks in for ISU along with Todd Cagle. They replace Brian Kern and Todd Webhainer, respectively. James Hamilton back in for Kwame Brown. Who was a force inside defensively, adjusting a few shots taken by the Redbirds. 8.45 to go first half. Illinois State with one field goal. 15-5. And a bad pass by Vandegaard. Bird get it back. Six. Tough shot. Missed it. Braves with it. John Smith at half court. This is what Bob Bender feared most. A good defensive showing by the Braves, and I guess you can't do anything on the offensive end. 15-5, Braves, Bailey Walk. You know, they call that move a trailing violation a lot in this league. It happens quickly. You don't really get a good look at it. I don't think you travel there, but they're consistent this week. Every time they do, they're head fake and drive the basket. It just seems like it's a traveling violation. I don't think I could have played in that league. <laughs> <laughs> you take away the head fake and drive to the basket, I don't know that I can play. Well, Ty Cagle drives the baseline, can't get it to fall. There is definitely a lead. Eight minutes without a bucket for the Red Bird. Ooh. Shot well, 19% from the field the last three games. Made a tough one there at 17 5 He's 0 for 7 tonight against the ball. Taylor, drive, fouled by Sookie. Charles White wants the same call that Dean Taylor got at the other end. What's a walk? That's a crackback block by Sookie White. <laughs> Executed pretty well. Three fouls on Roger Sookie. Looked a little bit like uh, hip check with Dominic LeBlanc throwing for the Riverman, too. Taylor at the line. Oh, I say that's uh, done any good there, either. Makes that one. What are they now? Four for nine from the line. The crowd at Redbird Arena very appreciative uh, of the scoreboard moving a little bit. That's the first time it's moved in almost nine minutes. That was an 11-0 run by the Braves. Taylor hits the ball. They're on a roll now. 17-7, Braves by 10. My wife gave me a jigsaw puzzle. <laughs>
She says it reminds her of the dealership. Okay, I admit our display areas are a little confusing. A million dollars of our inventory you can't even see from the road. But we do have a great selection, and that's what's important. Just come on in, we'll make it worth your while. At Jim McComb Chevrolet, we've been doing it right for over 28 years. You win at Jim McComb Chevrolet, take it and see. The First National Bank of Peoria takes pride in our community. Established in 1863, the First National Bank of Peoria is the 37th oldest national bank in the country and the oldest financial institution in Peoria. We're proud to have grown up with the Peoria area. We've helped our customers achieve their goals by offering quality loans at competitive rates from their automobiles to their first new home to that all-important business loan. Competent, dependable, secure. The First National Bank of Peoria. Member First Peoria Court, member FDIC. 17-7, the Braves out to the early 10-point lead. We want to thank our sponsors for making tonight's telecast possible. Pioneer Park Mitsubishi Hyundai, Parkway Mitsubishi, Counter Lock and Load, and Prowl. Country Companies, First National Bank of Peoria, Kitchen Cooks Potato Chips, Chemical Chevrolet, More Jewelry, Taco Bell, UA Cable, Quality Four Dealers, the Budweiser. There you get a good look at the Illinois State Band making a lot of noise tonight. They don't have... They're about the only ones in tune, I think. <laughs> Come on, Bradley's playing pretty well, Lee. Okay. True. They are off to a good start. The thing that's kind of scared Jim Molinari a little bit, though, Illinois State's a good second-half team, and they have led only twice at the half in their eight Missouri Valley wins. So they've come from behind in six of those. They're digging themselves another big hole tonight, though, just like they did at Carbondale. And I asked you going almost eight minutes there without uh, getting a field goal. Bradley didn't exactly run away. From well, they, got, they only got three throws. They still haven't had a field goal. One field goal so far in 13 minutes. Charles White with it. Yeah, five of those seven ISU points are from the free throw line. ISU's changed the strategy a little bit. Cagle came out and played uh, Charles White on the high side there, not letting him get that shot at the top of the key. ISU a transition pitch, having all kinds of problems controlling it. Pitch had a pretty high dribble, and then uh, Dwayne Fassard just gave the old-fashioned shove. Taylor. Boy, that took forever. Hey, I don't recall the exact time they scored, but they scored a field goal for their first two points. And then they get another one with 6.14 to go, first half. The officials want to check on Steve Fitch. He might have turned his ankle as he tried to retrieve that loose ball last time down. Chuck Barnes will check into it and for him, rather. Chuck Barnes, 6'5", 185 sophomore from Chicago, Whitney Young, went to the same high school as Richard Thomas of ISU. Fitch will get some attention on the ISU bench. And he'll hurt if he is uh, injured to the point where he can't, can't come back and play up to his ability. He's been there for 33.9 minutes in the last four games. In those games, he's been leading the Redbirds score at 14.5 points a game. Sean Smith, the drive, ran out of real estate. Now it's Charles White, six minutes to go first half, 17-9. Braves have led by as many as 12. 12 on the shot clock. Charles White with 10, no good. Kwame Brown to follow. Second shot, as you talked about it earlier. you got to limit the second shot that Bradley gets. Kwame got an easy one there. You don't like to see that happen, especially from a guy who's not normally going to score points. That was a big basket for Bradley, too. They had ISU uh, jumped down and gotten a, uh, about a 4-0 run on him, and Bradley was able to stop it at 4, not let it get to that 6, 8, 10, 12 point run like they've been able to give up in the past. Braves wanted a field goal goaltending last time. Now a foul inside. Tommy Brown picks up his first foul. Nice. He hasn't shot very well from the free throw line, but if it wasn't for the free throw line, he should really be in a hole. You know, ISU's used to being out-rebounded. He's been out-rebounded in the majority of the games. 
that's been a problem for them here tonight, though they want to concentrate on that. But at this point in time, they've been out rebounded 15 to 7 by Bradley. They are a team with no glass. Been out rebounded their last 10 games. They're 6 and 4 in those games. But that's got to be a concern. In and out, Chuck Barnes tips. Josh Smith gets up off the ground and picks it up. 19-10. Five minutes to go, first half. Braves with a nine-point lead. Sean's working a little bit as he runs down the sideline too. Lee. Charles White guarded by Chad Altadonna, the freshman from Centralia. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of brand offense they're going to be able to put together here. They've got Kwame Brown, who no one's looking to pass to. They've got Dwayne Broussard on the floor, who no one's looking to pass to. Now they're working a two-man play. Hamilton shot, blocked. Scott Baylor got a hand on it. The birds bring it the other way. Altadonna drives. It'll be a blocking foul on Sean Smith. Nice job by Altadonna there when you get an opening to the basket. Just put the shoulder down and go. If nobody's in front of you at the time, no one was going to be able to get there. Sean got about halfway there. You can see here he's in front of him, but he's still moving. That's a blocking foul. That's the 10th team foul on the Braves, so ISU will shoot two for the last 428 of the first half. Well, I didn't say it because I didn't want to hex anybody else. I did it to Bradley earlier, and he had made eight in a row, and it's 13 of 14 from the line this season. He misses his first. I didn't think he'd be able to jinx him by shooting in the 90-plus percentage range. Usually can uh, withstand the pressure that we can put on him. David Winslow makes his first appearance for the Braves, replacing Kwame Brown. Pressure by Illinois State has been ineffective so far. And they break it with no problem again. Bradley has done a better job, of course. They've had a lot of practice time on breaking that press. They gave them so much trouble earlier in the year. But they seem to be getting the ball up the floor quickly this late in the season, which is helping them to get some opportunities and to break that pressure. Bradley's going to get close to getting a five-second count. They haven't so much, they've got so much time to dribble. And inside is fouled. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, nobody it, from Illinois State is challenging them, and they've got the, you know, they're dribbling all over the floor. Yeah, they are pounding it. Nice look by Sean. He dribbled himself into trouble right there, and was able to find Willie breaking into the middle. He gave a good pass. Mike Vandegaard replaces Scott Top, uh, Taylor for Illinois State. James Hamilton will go to the line for Bradley. 6'7", 200 pounds sophomore from Ron Block, Michigan. 72% three thrower misses the first one. Bradley's leading scorer, leading rebounder, but he's been in a slump in the Valley, shooting just 25% of the last two Valley games. One for eight the field, and Creighton makes one of two. And it's now 20-11. Bradley with a nine-point lead, 3.57 to go, first half. The time to buy is right now! Don't wait another minute! The time is right to buy a new Mitsubishi Galant from Pioneer Park Mitsubishi and Parkway Mitsubishi. The all-new Mitsubishi Galant is priced right. Factory to dealer incentives make it even more affordable. Come test drive the right car, the Mitsubishi Galant. Pioneer Park Mitsubishi. Parkway Mitsubishi. The full-line Mitsubishi dealers. Get the right deal right now. Bradley University means a lot to the Peoria area as a community center, academically, athletically, and as a place where young people can take important steps toward the rest of their lives. I'm Bob Michael, and as a lifelong Purian and a Bradley graduate, I'm happy to lend my support to Bradley basketball. Let's go, Braves. Paid for by the Michael for Congress Committee. Bradley flashback, a special feature about a great Bradley moment in history.
be brought to you by the First National Bank of Peoria in their 129th year. The season 1965-66, a memorable first year for head coach Joe Stoll. The Braves notched a 20 win season that year. Coach Stoll went on to coach 13 years at Bradley and win 197 games on the hilltop and uh, coached a fellow by the name of Roger Fegley. Yeah, well, you know, Roger had a good ball game for us, man, but uh, yeah, he, he did do a good job on the board. Nice try. That'll do. <laughs> the coach. Doing games on radio now. Lending his expertise to Bradley fans. 2011, the Braves with a great start. 3.50 to go first half. The Braves looking for a little zone there, maybe. All right, they did come out in a little bit of a zone. Altadonna, put on the line. He's a shooter. you got to stay up on him, especially when you're playing zone. You're going to have to run to him and get right up in his face. His teammates call him Chad Omatic. I don't think we'll see Bradley in the... Uh, zone too many times. I think they just came out of the timeout with it just to create a little confusion. It's not a bad you think when you go to a timeout that uh, you're trying to organize something offensively and ISU did come out and run a, a set play. Jim Molinari thought the change of defense might disrupt that a little bit. Illinois State swipes the pass to turn over for the Braves. Their lead is seven. See Bob Bender up on the sideline over there directing traffic now. They're going kind of away from that motion game and they're starting to call plays and run set patterns. Almost picked off by Bouchard. Altagana and Omatic. Two in a row for the freshman from Centralia. And the fans are back in it, and that's something Bradley didn't want to see. A five-point lead for the Braves. That's right. You just made a key word there. The fans are back in it, but it also shows the inability of Bradley to score. ISU has just been miserable in the first half of the game thus far, and yet Bradley was not able to get a big enough lead. ISU has a chance to come down now with the basket, set it for three. Top <laughs> Wimpane are a little charged up on that one. I think he... Got about row five over there in section U here at Redbird Arena. James Bailey will check in for David Winslow. 221 to go first half, and it's a five-point game. I think, I think maybe we expected a good ball game tonight. We expected ISU to come back. We expected both teams to play it close here. Bailey with it. Wide open, but he won't take the shot. Vandegaard on Hamilton inside, and that's a key matchup right there. Fowler will pick him up on a switch at times, and they pick down low. We're under two minutes to go on the staff. They clear out the right. Charles pulls up and hits. That's what penetration dribble can do for you. It can create opportunities for you. Charles did a great job there getting it as far as he can and jumping straight up, not jumping, leaning toward the basket where he can pick up a charge and foul wipe that basket away. Altadonna, could it be three in a row? It is. You got to call the bank. Well, he didn't get a lot of, uh, he came off that screen, he was wide open, Bradley didn't recognize that, recognize who he is, and step out and get a hand in his face so he just can't dribble up there and take that shot. Seven points for the freshman. Three of three from the field, including the last three goals for ISU. And that foul on Scott Fowler, 20 feet from the bucket. And that's always an unpopular call when it's that far away from the basket and it's about the second and a half to two seconds after the ball is released. Scott Barron from Limestone will check in for James Hamilton. Scott's only played once in the last six games. He had five points out of three. James Bailey at the line. percent free throw and this is his first one. Brian yeah, Byrne checks in for ISU, he replaces Fowler. Altadonna's got seven points tonight here real quickly. Eight's the season high, he's done that twice. So he's on to a, off to a terrific start. At nine against Idaho State, that's his career high. <laughs> find an error in the uh, <laughs> Redford stat sheet. <laughs> Bailey 
this is a this is a bolt. Graves leads Flynn to five with one minute to go for a pass. Oh, a big cleared out for Webhater who pulled up and gave it to Vandegaard. This is a big man off the bench, Ryan. First two points of the game. Illinois State back within three. They trailed by as many as well. Vandegaard with only one bucket here in the first half. Really not playing up to his potential as he has earlier in the the last three or four games, he's been a big, big plus for ISU coming off the bench. As a matter of fact, their bench play in recent games has actually outscored their starters. Now, part of that is due to the fact that they play a lot of minutes from the bench. 20 seconds to go, first half. Wayne Broussard puts it up, missed it. Barnes tips, tips. And a foul on James Bailey with 16 seconds to go in the first half. Charles made some kind of pass there to get the ball to Broussard. If he could have made this shot, we'd have seen this highlight film on all the sports shows tonight. Bailey sits down with three. Starting to see a little momentum swaying here, Lee. A little bit. It's uh, something Illinois State's had problems with, too, to be honest with you. They haven't uh, really been able to put anybody away this season. Bradley having some trouble here. Vandegaard at the line from Bloomington, Minnesota. It's the first one. Bob Bender in his third year, and you know if anybody has any uh, any sympathy for what Bradley's going through this season, it's Bob Bender, who was 5 and 23 a year ago in his second season. Vandegaard hit both of his free throws, and we got it the ball game. 22-21, Sookie back in the ball game. Barron takes the seat. Illinois State has uh, been known to score some points in the final second. Let's see if Bradley can. Five, Charles Moore loses the ball. Bobby Brown lost it, but he was fouled. With four seconds to go. Where's Charles here? I thought he got fouled on the way up. Uh, three, four, five, David Winslow checks in for Bradley, who replaces Willie Hamilton. Wayne Broussard in for Sookie, the defensive team getting out there now. Alton Donna is at half court and they're keeping a very close eye on him. Charles shooting two, makes the first. We'll have four seconds to play after Charles' second free throw. That ends a 6-0 going on a state run. Makes them both. 24-21, four seconds to play. First half. Webb Hayner. The Vandegaard with one. Long three. No good. The Illinois State Magic not working at the end of this first half. Dominated by the Braves, but it's a close ball game. 24-21 in normal at halftime. business complex is uh, a lot of the dream about Bradley and Proven coming true. Uh, the computer labs, the way classrooms will be put together, the new room, just the roominess and airiness of the whole place is all a part of the dream about the environment you, you want to have. But you will appreciate it, those of us who've been around a while, by not having had it before. The new people won't even know it, but that's, that's all part of it because they'll just use it and they'll go with it and students will be able to do new things with uh, all the things that have to do with business, all the technology, all of the techniques for dealing with people. That new building is the, the real key to the next step in the College of Business which has improved marvelously in the last 15 years, making it the next move up. 
welcome back to Redbird Arena. Lee Hall along with former Bradley All-American Roger Stegley. The halftime score 24-21. Bradley leading and they're uh, doing pretty well on the stat sheet as well. 48% compared to just 30% for Illinois State. They only scored six field goals. Free throw percentage. ISU shooting a little better but by no means good. Rebounds in favor of the Braves by six. That's no surprise for the Redbirds. And turnovers, 8-6. Not a lot of scoring in this one, obviously. We take a look at the individual stats. Or we will not look at the individual stats, but I guess we will. Call me a liar. Charles White leading the Braves with eight. Sean Smith with five. Everybody in single digits for this game. James Bailey, four. Billy Hamilton with three. For Illinois State, the freshman Chad Altadonna off the bench. Chad O'Matic hit all three of his shots. He's got seven. He's got Taylor with five. He's got Fowler and Mike Vandegaard with four each. It was a tale of one half. Two segments of one half, I guess. It almost seemed like two distinct periods of basketball there. The Braves jumping out to a 17-5 lead and then Illinois State charging back to get within three. You're right. It, it's got to be a frustrating thing. You go in a locker room, you scored six field goals in the first half. If you'd, you know, if you'd have thought about that prior to the game, you'd have thought you'd had basically no chance to still be in the game. ISU has done that. Six field goals, only 30% from the floor. But yet they're right in this game, and they've done it with their defense. They need to come out early here in the second half, establish themselves defensively, see how Bradley's going to react. They've not caught Bradley yet. If they do, we've seen Bradley struggle from time to time. They're definitely not a good team on the road. They're not a good team when they get behind and have to catch up. So you know, we talk about it all the time, but the first five minutes of the second half is a very, very, very important part of the basketball game. And now that Illinois State is in the game and down by three, you can expect to hear it from this very large crowd. There's a few seats here. It's not a sellout, but it's a very biased Illinois State crowd. Broussard, Sookie, Charles White, Kwame Brown, James Hamilton in for the Braves. Same starting lineup. And the same for Illinois State. Illinois State really trying to work on Willie down low. Man in front, man in behind. He got caught for a holding foul there trying to keep the ball from getting into it. Well, they really didn't want him to have a big night tonight. Look at Taylor there just completely around in front of Willie, face guarding him almost. They did not want the ball down in Willie's hands, obviously. They feel like they can do that with Kwame Brown in there, a player who's not real adept at getting the ball and scoring. They don't have that high post pick out there at this point. Good defense by the Redbirds. Ahead to Scott Taylor, puts it up, missed it, missed the dunk. Good defense by ISU, that's what helps run it around a couple of turnovers by the Braves in the first half. But Illinois State can't convert on that one, and Bradley holds on to that three-point lead. He played a minute in the second half. This is what the inside people at ISU play defense here. They are just determined not to let Willie get the ball down. Taylor again with the base guard, follows right behind him. Three to four steps away from the water ground. Sookie can penetrate, kicks it back out to the start. Now Hamilton with it, out of the three-point line, 10 on the shot clock. Missed the shot, hits it around, and he loses it out of bounds. Really kind of forcing the action a little bit there, but he doesn't have much of a choice the way they're guarding him inside. James Bailey will check in for Bradley. I wouldn't doubt if he came in for Kwame Brown. He does this bad, and that's a good move by uh, Coach Molinari. If they're going to continue to front James like that, guard him two on one, you cannot have a player on the floor who simply won't score. Sean James is a little more offensive minded. Hopefully we'll take a little bit of the pressure off. Sean Smith back into the ball game for the Braves. 24-21. Nobody scored for a minute and a half in the second half. They have now. Todd Cagle with three and we're tied. Jim Molinari wants a timeout. Todd Cagle, the former walk-on from Thermal Community, ties this ball game. He hasn't had a chance to shoot one yet. He's 9 for 19 on the season thus far. Over 44%. That's the guy you've got to recognize and pop out on him. We're tied at Redbird Arena.
realize that Jack is awakening. Jack, I'm awakening. Five of the top ten best-selling cars and trucks in America are Fords. It's a fact. Import or domestic, Ford trucks lead all others. Trucks like Ford Ranger, the best-selling compact pickup in America, with features the imports can't match, even a three-year buffer to buffer warranty. And right now, you can save up to twenty-seven hundred dollars on a new Ranger. That's right, save twenty-seven hundred dollars for five of the top ten best-selling cars and trucks in America. There's only one place to go: your local Ford dealer. State tied at 24. Time now for us to put up the clock. The kitchen cooked potato chips slam dunk 60. If a Bradley player slams the ball in the next 60 seconds, Jenna and Gail Hamrick will win a year's supply of kitchen cooked potato chips. If you want to get in on it, send us a postcard to the address on your screen. No purchase necessary. We played a minute 37 in the second half, and we're tied now. Braves led by as many as 12 in the first half, and Todd Cagle nails a three to start the second half, and we're tied. A little bit different setup here tonight. Normally, the Redbirds would shoot in front of their own bench in the second half. Bradley took the prerogative of playing defense in front of their own bench in the first half, and that tells you a little bit about Jim Molinari style, one to uh, emphasize the defensive end of the floor. Roger Sookie with it. Now the Braves are trying to set up that high post screen out near the key. James Bailey will be the screener. Todd Wemhainer fights through that. Sean Smith hits the floor. Wemhainer steals it away. Ahead to Scott Taylor. The Redbirds can't control it. That's two now. That's two buckets they should have had. On steals. Todd Wemhainer, the steal that time, he's second in the Valley in steals, about two a game. Pressure's tightened up here. ISU going man-to-man, -man, full court now, playing a little tighter than they did in the first half. 24-24. Look at Taylor Garden Willie, still just almost a complete face guard. He did a really nice job against Ash Rafamaya in the first half of the Southern game here a couple of weeks ago. Nobody wins any potato chips, but James Bailey hits the bucket. Bailey with six. Nice move for James, dribbling with the right hand, pulls up and shoots it back with the left. That's a tough shot. He did nothing but the bottom that time. Now it's Hamilton playing the defense on Taylor at the other end. He's doing a nice job on him. Fitch will put it up from there, drains it. And Fitch hit one from the exact same spot that Todd Cagle hit one just a minute ago. He was three of four from beyond the stripe against Southern Illinois, and Illinois State takes its second lead of the ball game. They led three to two. You know, and that's a shot that ISU has used recently. They've made 14 three-point shots in their last three games, and they've made two already here in the second half. Hamilton. Knocks Taylor to a floor and hits the shot, too. Five for Willie, so he's well below his average. Race by one. Taylor fakes, shoots, no good. Tipped around and it'll be a foul on Scott Taylor on the back. A little aggressive, following his own shot. That shows good block out by Bradley. Curates the foul over the top of the back by Taylor. Scott Taylor, his fourth foul, and we've got 16 minutes of basketball to be played. Taylor will sit down with five points. Vandegaard in. Sean Smith back in for the Braves. Roussard dribbles, charge. 
once again, Dwayne showing an ability to penetrate. He got right directly underneath the basket to get that close. Look as he penetrates here, right about now, you got to be looking for a shot. He's standing directly under the basket right there and gets a charging foul. Two fouls on Broussard, second team foul. First team foul for the Braves, brother. They lead it by one. Pass inside, nice defense, Willie Hamilton. But just really good recognition by Willie there to pick that pass off. Smith with it in the corner. Now it's James Bailey guarded by Wim Hainer. Now it's Fowler on Hamilton inside. Charles White holds up, no good. Rebound, Wim Hainer. ISU the other way. He pushes the issue and he's fouled. Second foul on Sean Smith. Wim Hainer will go to the line. ISU looks like they're really trying to pick the tempo up here in the second half of this game. It's three opportunities off the fast break here that uh, they haven't been able to capitalize on yet, but with their defense, they're really starting to push it up the floor quickly. Todd Webb here, 6'2", 175, sophomore from Quincy. Played in that game a couple of years ago when Quincy beat Manuel down to Civic Center. 73% from the line, hits his first. And he's kind of a Bobby Hurley type. Uh, you're right, you're right. Bob Bender, of course, an assistant coach at Duke for six years. And Todd Webhainer is that kind of player, the guy that gets everything done for you. Well, Todd doesn't score a lot. He doesn't score a lot, but he plays good, hard nose defense out front. That sets the tone for the defense behind you. Second in the league in steals. Third in the league in assists. So he can do a lot of things for you. And even though he doesn't score, and you're third in the league in assists, you're doing some things offensively to help the team score. Chad Altadonna in for Todd Cagle. Chuck Barnes in the ball game now for Illinois State. Here we play Steve Fitch. 15-19 to play Illinois State by one. Very close to a five second call there, just getting the ball inbound. Roger Sook, he's been very quiet here since the opening part of the game. We're going to need somebody to step out and hit a couple of outside shots or ISU just going to continue to pack it inside on the scores down low. Sean Smith of the free throw line. Jumper. Seven for Sean. Quickly the other way. It's Illinois State. 30-29. Vandegaard walk. Vandegaard struggled a little bit here tonight. Sean Smith has really played pretty well for Bradley thus far. Uh, he's a... If you looked in the dictionary under a streak shooter, Sean Smith's picture would be there. He's just shot the ball very well tonight, very confidently, and we talked about how poorly he's shot the ball before that, and when, he, when he's not really traveled there, that was just unfortunate. If, if you look that up in the dictionary, is that one word or two? Streak shooter, sorry. <laughs> is definitely that. When he's on, he's on, and when he's not. Steve Fitch is a player like that for Illinois State. Vandegaard down low, follow a jumper, comes shot, hits it. See, when a guy that size gets down on the baseline and fades away a little bit with that shot, it's awful tough to defend. Don't be surprised if this goes down to the wire, because that's the way Illinois State's lived about the last month. Baseline jumper good. Really heating it up in the second half. He's got seven. Bauer double team down low. They try the cross court pass. Vandegaard keeps it in. Red Hainer three, no good. Sean Smith on the break. Sean Smith, the showtime bucket. Bradley getting a rare breakaway for a layup. In a game like 
like this where it's going to be close, nip and tuck all the way to the wire. Anytime you can get an opportunity to get an easy one like that, it's really a lift. Winslow in for Bailey. And it's a three-point Bradley lead. Barnes for three, no good. And it bounces over the backboard. It's about to wear out that spot on the left side of the free throw line there shooting three-pointers. All three of their opportunities this half have come from within a three-foot area. Where was the potato chip clock when that happened? 13 minutes to play at Redbird Arena. Lee Hall, Roger Sager, hope you're enjoying this one. To say it's a defensive struggle might be the understatement of a century. Sookie. Hamilton, dribble, shoots, good. He's going to hit that if he's open. He's got nine. Great, pull back to a five-point lead. They managed to hold off this little ISU run and put one of them together of themselves. And really with a nice play. So it really went down hard on the baseline there over a couple of the photographers that were sitting down there. It's good to see them get up. As soon as you leave the floor here, you're on concrete. TV 25's very own Russ Matusko, the buffer. <laughs> Bradley had a 6 nothing run, and they lead it by five. Sookie spots up for three, no good. Air ball. And Charles White can't hang on to the rebound. And he hears about it from the crowd. Defender baseline punch. White had an amazing game the other night, a career high seven steals against the ball, and he got a nose for the ball. He just seems to get there wherever it is. He does anticipate there. I think he'll pick that one off, but he just ran out of real estate on the sideline over there. Todd Cagle back into the ball game for ISU, replacing Todd Lemhainer. Alpagana, a freshman. Foul, they won't count. Sookie, a freshman. Kern, a freshman. Winslow, a freshman. Sookie picks up his fourth personal foul with 11.52 to play. Alpagana goes to the line. 6'3 freshman from Centralia. If you drive through Central South City, you will drive by Alpadana ICA. St. Jude runners have a pit stop there, that's how I know that. So if you're watching at home and you want a clinic on free throw shooting, watch Chad Alpadana. There's, there's a reason why he shoots 93% from the line. He's very solid at the line. Nice follow through, nice hard run. And when you shoot it with that nice touch, you get a bounce like that. 36-33, Braves by three with 11.52 to play. Design Furniture and Systems have created efficient offices for hundreds of Tri-County businesses. From interior design and space planning to product selection, coordination, and accent pieces to their experienced service department's final installation. No matter what your space or budget, Design Furniture and Systems can make your office more efficient through space saver systems like this mobile storage unit or color-coded filing systems. Design Furniture and Systems, Downstate's fastest growing interior design company with additional sales offices in Bloomington and LaSalle, Peru. When you practice conservation tillage to help protect the environment, you need the outstanding flexibility and proven effectiveness of Prowl herbicide. Applied pre-emergence or in early post-tank mixes, Prowl controls your toughest grasses and broadleaf leaves. You save money, too, up to $5 an acre over lasso or dual. Prowl works like clockwork all season long. Get Prowl at your local Cyanamid Agri Center dealer. Presented by Pioneer Park and Parkway Mitsubishi, the right choice. After a long hiatus, Bradley and Illinois State renewed their rivalry in 1975. 
who were the head coaches for each team that season. We'll give you the answer later on. I know one of them, and I'm pretty sure of the second. 36, 33, raised by three. You ought to remember that, shouldn't you? I remember one of them. <laughs> and I think I know the second. <laughs> As a player, you don't pay much attention to the other team or who's the coach. Do you? Well, you pay a lot of attention to the other team. Not to the coach, though. <laughs> Well, that was uh, just the beginning. That Bradley ISU rivalry really heated up. In my college days, Coach Versace and Coach Donna Wall. It's still just as rabid with the fans, even though uh, a couple of coaches are still getting used to the thing. Bruce Hamilton down low, called for the offensive foul. That's his third. So he's in foul trouble. Sookie has four. Hamilton with three. The halftime score that went to a lot of Bradley people in Peoria. Wichita State 35. Indiana State 27. That hit Wichita. The Shockers tied right now with Bradley. Ryan Kern inside the freshman. So the freshman making some noise for the Redbirds tonight. Seven minutes to play. Braves by one. A big game. Bradley ISU. Illinois State. Bradley both trying to jack the position in the Valley Tournament coming up. Steve Fitch taps it out of bounds. Richard Thomas back into the ball game. Hurt his knee the other night with Southern Illinois. That's why he hasn't played much tonight. He replaces Chad Altadonna. Raise inbounds with a one-point lead. Hamilton drives, blocked by Fitch. Well, Steve Fitch got up on that block, didn't he? He's a very athletic player. Played his junior college ball at Lincoln. His teammate Reggie Wilson there, if I'm not mistaken. Mike Vandegaard hammered. He was all the way behind the bank board. I don't think he had a chance to put that one in. That would have been one tough shot coming over the top of the back of the back of the corner. Underneath the shot clock. There's a lot of obstacles back there. There's a look at the foul trouble for each team. Scott Taylor with four for Illinois State. James Bailey just picks up his four. So he and Sookie have four. Hamilton with three. Vandegaard at the line. Talk about blocked shots. He was one in the valley with 26. One point four a game. Kwame Brown checks back in for James Bailey, who has four fouls. He talked about how free throws would become important for the game. Vandegaard shoots. I oh yeah, shoots 22nd free throw of this game. Bradley's been in the line to shoot eight. Well, the free throws have kept ISU in it. They have a shot, a good percentage. Inside to Hamilton. Defense there by Vandegaard and Kern. Can't hit the shot. Loose ball. Who's going to get it? Loose guard comes up with it. New shot clock for the Braves with 10 minutes to play. Hamilton fakes. Pulls up. Shoots. Gets it back. Kwame Brown. Good effort by the Braves. And they lead again by three. Steve Fitz jacks it up from way outside. That's not the shot Bob Bender wanted. Did right, you see that reaction by him? He was down on all fours. He did not like the, the looks of that shot from the second left his hand. Wayne Broussard avoids the walk. Better check his wallet. That's a 360 like I've never seen before. Charles White with it. Steve Fitch almost got the steal. White pulls up, shoots, misses, Cagle the rebound. Yeah, he looked a little ragged there, but Charles did get a pretty good look at the basket there, wasn't able to get the shot down. Kern inside, Vandegaard, can't hang on, does, has it stripped away. I think Charles snuck around from the back and got a hand on that ball. It's a nice heads up play there by Charles. I'll tell you what, Illinois State's within three, but they have not been good offensively all night. 
Broussard drives, nobody helps out, and he scores. And the Bradley lead is back up to five. Bradley's playing hard. There's some Bradley faithful here in this crowd, and they're loving it. Bad pass by Richard Fowler. Scott Fowler, Chad Altadonna, Todd Wemhainer come in for Illinois State as they change lines. Fitch, Cagle, Vandegaard out for the bird. Scott Taylor will come in for the SU. He'll replace Richard Thomas, who will get an earful after that last pass. You can hear a faint chant of BU coming from the very top. <laughs> Echoing off the roof. Behind the Bradley uh, basket at this point. Raised by five. It's hard to tell where the Bradley people are sitting here. Everybody's wearing red. Gets Bradley in the Missouri Valley Tournament. Broussard puts it up. Just everything but the backboard. The foul on Swami Brooks. No, a foul on Todd Webhain. The crowd here doesn't like that. There was a lot of contact inside. And the crowd doesn't like it here. 7.47 to play. It's just about as loud as a 7.47 in here. Raised by five. For nearly 30 years, Woodmore Office Products has provided thousands of customers with quality office products for the home and office. With a dozen different departments, Woodmore is truly a full-service office product store. Whether you need office or computer furniture, supplies, machine service, or a variety of other business services, Woodmore people are knowledgeable. We help you choose the right office items and show you how to use them. Widmore Office Products, Peoria and Bloomington. We make it easy for you to do business with quality products, outstanding service, and competitive prices. It's only natural that children look to their parents for answers. So to help you explain why some things that may be fine for adults aren't right for children, Anheuser-Busch offers family talk. Free advice from professionals to use with your kids while they're still learning to be grown up. And their favorite teacher is you. Let's stop underage drinking before it starts. Well, the rivalry just heated up while you were away. 40 to 35, Bob Bender incensed at the call against Todd Wemhainer. Jim Molinari walked the length of the floor to have a chat with the officials. <laughs> he was in the ISU huddle almost. Bradley Trivia presented by Pioneer Park Mitsubishi. Bradley and Illinois State renewed their rivalry in 1975. Will Robinson coached ISU. Joe Stoll, the Bradley Braves. I knew you'd get one of them right. You didn't know which one. <laughs> 7.47 to play. Graves with the ball out of bounds and a five-point lead. And don't be surprised if you see a makeup call in the near future for Illinois State. Come on, Ali, they don't do that. Oh, I know they don't do that. I'm sorry, I forgot. Broussard. Charles White. Big, yeah. big fan. Oh, the Bradley lead is back to seven. That was the makeup call. Hold on, but Sean slid in there, got a hand on that pass in the, the fouler. There may have been some contact there, but it was good heads up play. That's the front Sean slide in there. Yeah, maybe, maybe a little body. Jim Molinari didn't think so. The third foul on Sean Smith. 16th foul. Inbound, they're down seven. I guess you just still can't seem to pull the lid off the top of that bass. 10 for 29 now, 35 percent. Webhater blocked by Sean.
Sean Smith. He's doing a lot of talking. And Fowler is fouled by Charles White. total for the season, 50 at Wichita State. Power a good free throw shooter for a big man, 73% on the season. Charles White with the foul. They're now 14 of 23 from the line. Right at about 60% for the birds. The Donna was in about two seconds too soon. They're going to wipe that one away. by the freshman, and that's the kind of thing that's going to cost you a ball game. 42-36 with seven minutes to play. Better prediction. Well, the free throws haven't uh, necessarily been that good. Of course, they've got a lot more free throws than Bradley. 14 made as opposed to four for Bradley. Kwame Brown fouled by Scott Fowler. Kwame, you got to make those, huh? Yeah, I think Fowler might have got a hand on it. The Redbirds were as good as they've been on the road have not done that well at all. At least not in the valley. As we scurry through our stretch, he's going to find us. I believe they're two or two at home in the valley. That might not be right. Deep break, cross the southern, cross the south of Deep Wichita, two or two. Two or two at home, they're five or two on the road. because that only ends up seven inches in the valley. Well, the Donna Trail is right in front of the presidential. Kwame Brown with a great block, and they're going to call a foul. Let me readjust that. The Birds 3-2 at home. 5-2 on the road in the valley. But they struggled lately. They lost two in a row. That's unfortunate. Kwame's got to pick up the foul. Held the Donna traveled right in front of the Bradley bench. And he will go to the line. Illinois State lost two in a row at home at one point. They lost back-to-back -back games to Southern and in overtime to Tulsa. They beat Wichita State here. They just avoided this as losing their third in a row at home in a last-second 25-footer. Alpha Donna hits a goal. And it's a four-point game with 6.42 to play. Mike Vandegaard in there. 11 for Altadonna. Vandegaard replaces Brian Kern. <laughs> Illinois State's last four games have come down in the final three seconds. They've got a little work ahead of them, but that's going to happen tonight. They trail by four. Hamilton picks up his dribble, Broussard, the back cut, Kwame Brown follows, Altadonna picks it up and a foul on Kwame Brown. Three on him. I know, Lee, this is about the point in the first half where the momentum started to swing from Bradley to ISU. There, Dwayne got free right here for a nice layup opportunity. He misses it. Kwame gets both hands on that ball. That's control. That's a foul there, and then he's out of frustration. He reaches over the top of a 93% foul shooter and sends him to the line. They wave it off. What is that? I don't know. You give the kid the ball and then you wave it off. Altadonna hits the ball. Just like that, four straight free throws from Chad Altadonna and Illinois State within two. And here comes the crowd. 
six minutes to play, Braves by a deuce. Hamilton and Vandegaard banging inside. Bailey picks up his dribble. Charles White with him now, top of the key. Roger Spooky will check in next dead ball for the Braves. Bradley's been able to hold off all these runs all night long. Now it's getting down in the front time. They're going to have to do it again. John Smith inside to Hamilton. Vandegaard gets a hand on it. Possession arrow points Illinois State's way. Uh, Illinois State going back to the bread and butter. He's back in the game, picking up momentum through the defensive end of play. That's what turned it around for him in the first half. Two straight turnovers, good defensive play. They're down two. Bradley needs a stop here. Inside, Bauer. Goaltending, we're tied. Jim Molinari wants to talk it over. The goaltending by James Bailey ties it. 5.25 to play. Of the top 10 best-selling cars and trucks in America, five are Fords. That's right, five are Fords. Proving that Fords lose the way with high-quality cars like the all-new Escort Sedan, America's best-selling small car. And right now, you can own a new 1992 Ford Escort for only $154 a month. That's $154 a month for a new Escort. And every new Escort is backed by a three-year bumper to bumper warranty. You wanted a good reason to buy American, and your Ford dealer has five good reasons. Take one for a test drive today. Full of special occasions and kitchen cook products have always been a big favorite for family time, party time, anytime. No matter who you're serving, Kitchen Cook has a wide selection to please every taste. From chips, pretzels, and popcorn to cheese curls, chili, or our all-new salsa and tortilla chips, you love the variety. Count on the hearty, made-fresh daily flavor of Kitchen Cook snacks to please everyone, every time. So for big occasions or those quieter times, remember Kitchen Cook. Because if we could make it any fresher, it would be a potato. 7-0 run by the Redbirds, and we are tied with 5.25 to play. We want to thank our sponsors for helping us out tonight. Pioneer Park Mitsubishi Hyundai, Parkway Mitsubishi, Counter Lock and Load and Plow, Country Company, First National Bank of Peoria, Kitchen Cook Potato Chips, Jim McComb Chevrolet, Ford Jewelers, Taco Bell, UA Cable, Quality Tour Dealers, and Budweiser. Big possession coming up for the Bradley Braves. Bradley is yet to trail in this game. Now they trailed a couple of times. 3-2. 3-2. You can't read my writing. 27-26 in the second half here. 29-28. Yeah, they trailed a couple of times, but never by more than one. It's even now. White with it. Gives it to James Hamilton. Looks to make a move against Vandegaard. Pulls up. This is it. Rebound by SU. I really think Bradley got the shot they wanted there from the right guy. Really just couldn't get it to go down. Now they're going to play defense. That's a kick by Sookie. That's a new 45. And we're just under five minutes to play now. James Hamilton missed four shots in a row. According to our statistician, Perry Cole doing a nice job with us on the road tonight. Inside, Vandegaard makes it against good pressure by James Hamilton. And it's a two-point Illinois State lead with 430 to play. There's about 10,000 in here going crazy. A big possession for the Braves. Bailey puts up a tough shot, nails it. James Bailey stops a 9-0 Illinois State run. And we're top. With four minutes to play. Can't tell you how big that pass was right there. Freshman Alta Donna had a 
big game. It just got bigger. I'll tell you what, he took that ball to the basket. Not like a freshman. A career high 15, you know, one of the most popular two rock bands now is Mr. Big. And that's been Chad Alpha Donna tonight. I think somebody in this broadcast team said something about that earlier. Five second call against the Braves. And that's a big turnover for Bradley. They need to stop here. Two point game with three minutes and 26 seconds to go. Every possession is going to get more and more important. And they go to Mike Vandergaard once again, who presses the issue, and that's four fouls on James Hamilton. And that's going to make it tough. Boy, not a lot of contact there either. Not a lot of contact. The reason I laugh about the five second call we mentioned earlier in the game. Bradley was allowed to roam so freely that they were able to dribble for three, four, five seconds sometimes because nobody would guard them close enough to, to make them pick up their dribble. Vandegaard makes his first free throw, and it's a three-point ISU lead, their biggest. Vandegaard, you can't see it, but on his shoes he has written ice number four. That's in honor of Reggie Wilson. Redbird forward who is out for the season for three broken bones in his leg. 48-44. The Redbird starting to make those free throws now. They're flying. They're 20 out of 29 now. They're starting to make them win it down. Sean Smith put on the line. Good. Well, the difference is at the line. It's a two-point ISU lead, but it's 20-4 from the free throw line in favor of ISU. Altadonna thought about the shot. Three minutes to play. Great. Down two. Cagle tried to force it inside. Kick by James Hamilton. I don't know if he purposely kicked it, but it went off his leg. Jim Molinari's first year at Bradley has been a struggle. But he's building for the future. Bob Bender struggled last year, and his team has done well this year. Vandegaard got away with a hook and rolls it in. I think, I think it was Bailey playing defense on him. He hooked him and got around him. It's a nice move if you get away with it. It's a 15-4 ISU run. Donna picks it off, loses it out of bounds, but it's ISU ball. How deep is this ISU team? Chad Altadonna didn't even get in the game at Southern Illinois at Carbondale. He is their leading scorer tonight. He's created a big, big turnover there. ISU can really put a lock on this thing with a basket here. They talk about free throws in favor of Illinois State. Look at the bench point. Oh, another big, big key. We knew that ISU's bench had, on the last four or five occasions, outscored their uh, their starters for tonight. They are really doing a number on Bradley's bench. ISU with 27 points off the Bradley with 15. There's two more for Todd Cable getting the start tonight, and it's... A six-point ISU lead, a minute 30 to play. And now the clock becomes a big, big factor. Bradley, not a team that's going to score quick. has got to try and do that. Crowd wanted a walk. Tip, ISU keeps it in. James Hamilton is hurt. He's down. He hurt his ankle. And that, that's not a good picture. Bradley trainer Bill McGee out to check on Billy Hamilton. It's his right ankle, watch it here. Oh, it was right away too. Just like he came down.
down on Ron. We didn't get a real good look at it there. A lot of times you'll see the come down on the on the side of somebody's foot. I don't think he did that there. He just landed on it in a little bit of a twist. And he's in a lot of pain. Back to Jeske out there to check on Willie along with Jim Molinari. They've had to Boy, what a, what a struggle. Chad Klein, one of your top three scorers, out after an appendectomy. And now this is, let's hope he's okay. Although the way he twisted it, I would be surprised if he stayed in the game. James Hamilton and Mr. Everything for Bradley, their leading scorer, leading rebounder. A giant in the Valley, too. Fourth in scoring, second in rebounding in the Valley, third in field goal percentage, fourth in block shots. The concern now is over his right leg. We're going to toss it to a break, and we'll uh, have an update on James Hamilton's condition when we return. 114 to play, 52-46 ISU. FS Diesel X2E improves fuel efficiency, an average of 5.7%. When my dad died, it was a shock going through all this stuff. I mean, I'm sure he knew what everything was, but to me, it was complete chaos. At least for all our insurance, he dealt with one agent and took care of everything. Country companies. It's nice to know when it matters most. The country is behind you. I guess we're all going to die sometime. My dad just didn't think it would be so soon. World champion Tamara McKinney combines grace, performance, and timing. As a Rolex Junior Skiing Ambassador, she inspires these same qualities in a new generation. Qualities Rolex proudly supports at U.S. Skiing's Rolex Junior Olympics. The choice of champions, Rolex. Available at Moore's Jewelers, lower level of Northwoods Mall, Peoria. We're back at Redbird Arena, 52-46, Illinois State with 114 to play, but the story now is the health of James Hamilton. Watch him here. He goes for the rebound. Oh, and he twisted that pill. Oh, he did come down. He came down on the side of Van de Gaard's foot. And it looked like the ankle rolled out. They cut his sock and the wrap off. That's not a good sign. I don't think we'll see him tonight for the rest of the night. Let's hope he's okay. Helped off by his teammates, David Winslow, Scott Barron. That's a scary sight. Nine points, ten rebounds tonight for Willie. That's a scary sight and something that uh, Illinois State fans can certainly uh, sympathize with. Losing Reggie Wilson for the season. They lost Scott Fowler last year to a knee injury. Let's hope Willie will be all right. We'll uh, try and get an update on him for you before we uh, go off the air. If we don't, Try and get something for you on News 25 Nightside with Mark Strauss coming up in a little over an hour. Todd Webhainer trapped in a foul on Charles White with a minute 10 to play. And I think if they lose James Hamilton, he can just about kiss uh, any chances of going to the Valley Tournament goodbye. You can't, you, you, you can't lose a guy like that. Yeah. Yeah. What Bradley's got left, they got a game in Northern Iowa, Southwest Missouri at home. Drake, Illinois State at home again, and then at Tulsa and at Wichita. And I thought Willie got the big, big jump. So the Braves' tough season gets even tougher. Todd Webhainer at the line. As you mentioned, Roger Bradley goes to Northern Iowa to complete their three-game road trip on Monday night. Illinois State is home Monday night. They go out of conference to host St. Louis, the only team that Bradley's beaten on the road this year. Charles White with it. And that'll be a block on Todd Webster. Charles White will go to the line with 103 to play, and Bradley's down by seven. 
you know, things really turn quickly here with six minutes to go in the game. Everything just seemed to go ISU's way in there. You know, there's a seven point lead here. It's really going to be tough for Bradley to overcome in the last minute. Bradley led 42 35. Since then, ISU has gone on an 18 4 run. Four misses. Alpha down to the rebound. And Charles will pick up the foul. Three on him. And we're going to spend the last 53 seconds at the free throw line. Jim Molinari, a little prophetic at his press conference the other day. He said that uh, about the ISU rivalry, it would be a little better if uh, both teams were competing on the same plane. And that Bradley would have the same problems against ISU that they've had against Southern Illinois and everybody else in the Valley. Altadonna hits the both. Although the Braves played well tonight until the last four or five minutes here. Now a nine-point ISU lead, and that run is fourteen for ISU. I think Bradley's lack of scoring really showed up even in the first half when they were unable to capitalize on a nine-minute period of time where Illinois State couldn't get a basket. Real sloppy now, Lee. Bradley's throwing it away, and ISU's throwing it down. Thirty-four seconds to play, and Scott Fowler will go to the free throw line. So Illinois State will improve to nine and four in the Valley, uh, and they will be tied with Indiana State and Southwest Missouri State for second behind Southern Illinois. Bradley will drop to two and ten in the Valley. They will be tied with Drake for the bottom spot. We don't have a final on Wichita State, Indiana State, but the Shockers led it half. Fowler the miss. So right now, as we speak, Bradley would be tied with Drake for last place, which would not even get them into the tournament anyway. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They have to hope Wichita State loses at home because that is the last spot. Sean Smith for three. Bell's wide a tip. 22 seconds left. And the Bird fans are singing. They're chirping. Well, you knew the Redbirds would play better than they did in the first half. You knew they were going to come back out and play tough at some point in the game. Bradley did a, really a pretty nice job of holding off three or four runs that ISU ran at him. Unfortunately, ISU came back with one more than Bradley was able to hold off. Bradley, a great start. They played hard and nearly buried Illinois State, but the Birds come back. 58-46 to the final. We'll be back at Redbird Arena in just a minute.
back to Redbird Arena. Lee Hall with the former Manly All-American Roger Pegley. An impressive comeback by the Illinois State Redbirds as they outscore Bradley down the home stretch 23 to 4 and win it 58-46. We were nothing new on James Hamilton who went out of the game with a little over a minute to play. He uh, has injured his right ankle it looked like. We'll try to have an update for you coming up on News 25 night side. Leading score for the Braves, Sean Smith off the bench with 11 points. He is our Budweiser player of the game. Our congratulations to him. Charles White also a double figure for Bradley with 10. Chad Alfredano, the freshman, with 17. Illinois State to lead the way for the Redbirds. Mike Vandegaard also off the bench with 12 for Illinois State. The Birds improved to 11 and 10, 9 and 4 in the conference. The Braves' road struggles continue as they lose their 13th in a row on the road. 6 and 18, 2 and 10 in the conference. The Braves are in Northern Iowa Monday. Their next televised game coming up a week from today as they host the Drake Bulldogs homecoming day at Bradley and Carver Arena. 2 o'clock tip-off. And we hope to see you there. Again, the final, 58-46 ISU for Roger Pegley and our broadcast team here at Redbird Arena. I believe you all. Take care, everybody. It's a machine normal.